Our coverage begins tonight with Stuart Greer in Georgia's capital city. Convoys of Russian tanks rumbled deeper into Georgia. They moved into the strategic city of Gori and were seen on the road to Tbilisi, but stopped an hour short of the capital. Georgia's president accuses Russia of violating the truce just 12 hours after the EU brokered agreement was struck. From this morning, there was the large scale movement of weapons, uh, of shooting, of, uh, of armed incidents, rampages from uh, different towns and villages of Georgia. Russia claims its troops were fired on by Georgian snipers. It says it was moving to neutralize a nearby military base and clear out pockets of Georgian soldiers. In the rubble of Gori, still smoldering from yesterday's airstrike, residents said South Ossetian militias, backed by Russia, were looting and terrorizing the city. It's a bad situation, she says. There's no bread, there's nothing. We're hungry. It's clear neither side has pulled back to the positions they held before the conflict started, as called for in the ceasefire agreement. With the countryside still too dangerous, hundreds of refugees continue to flood into the capital each day, with kindergartens here turned into makeshift shelters. Dozens of families now live in cramped schoolrooms. An estimated 100,000 people are now homeless. They, they are dreaming when they will be back. But they said how we can go when the roads are closed and when the, the uh, houses are in fire. With their homes destroyed, all they can do is wait for the conflict to end. Some international humanitarian relief, however, is now starting to trickle in. That was Global National Stuart Greer reporting from Georgia tonight. Let's